right, so let's take a look at our first type of problem. Uh, we've got a contingency table. So a contingency table provides a way of portraying data that can facilitate calculating probabilities. The table helps in determining conditional probabilities quite easily. All right, so I'm gonna read through the next example and ask my favorite question, what is the variable, or actually in this case variables, that we're keeping track of. So the table below shows a random sample of 100 hikers and the areas of hiking they prefer. All right, so let's take a look at our table. There's a bunch of information on it, right? So I've got some gender that I'm looking at, male and female. I've got where you prefer to hike. You prefer to hike along the coastline, near lakes and streams, on mountain peaks. And I've got some, some numbers in here. And I want you to take a look that these numbers are whole numbers. These are frequency counts. So in terms of the variables in this problem, imagine you were going to one of these 100 hikers. What are you gonna ask them? And I'm gonna tell you there's two variables. So I'm gonna put variables in this problem. So in this case, I've got gender, and I would say hiking preference. Right, so for each of those 100 hikers, not only am I gonna keep track of if they're male or female, I'm gonna ask them where they prefer to hike. And those are both categorical variables. So you see me keeping track of a bunch of frequencies, right? and I only gave a partial list, but these are all frequencies. And whenever you have categorical variables, we do keep track of frequencies and we turn them into proportions. Or in this case, we're gonna officially call them probabilities. So let's take a look at this. The first direction here says complete the table. And you can do this in a multiple number of ways. It's just gonna be your call as to how you wanna do it. So to kind of get the feels for a contingency table, you see this first row of females. We had 18 prefer hiking near the coastline, 16 near lakes and streams. This is open, but we know the total should be 45. So since we have two of these numbers, we could figure out the third one. That's one way to go. You also could look at this column. You have two of the three pieces of information you need here. We know that 16 females prefer hiking near lakes and streams. We don't know the male number, but we know the total. So we could infer what was going on there. Just out of, uh, to start this out, this has to total out to 100, right? We knew there were 100 hikers. So again, it's up to you how you wanna attack this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna figure out the female, uh, the missing number on the female on mountain peaks. So if I look here, I had 18, let me clear this out, 18 plus 16 females. So I had 34 total, uh, not 34 total, excuse me, 34 accounted for out of the 45 total. So if I subtract that number from 45, I knew there were 11 that preferred hiking near the mountain peaks. So I will fill that number in with 11. And once you start to get one of these, the rest of them are gonna come pretty quickly. So there's a bunch of places I can go. I can do 11 plus 14 would have to be 25. And you don't have to go that way, but it's an option. Now I'm gonna figure out the males that prefer hiking near lakes and streams by subtracting these two numbers. So let's do 41 minus 16, and it looks like 25 males prefer hiking near lakes and streams. And then I can start to reverse this way, right? So I could figure out this row. I know that this number, this number, and this number should total out to 55. I know what two of these numbers are, so I can figure out the missing one. Let's try 25, oops, excuse me, 25 plus 14. When I look at that, that's 39. Now let me subtract that from 55 and find out 16 males preferred hiking near the coastline. 18 plus 16 would be 34. And then I like to just do a quick check. Let me make sure that 34, 41, and 25 is 100, just so I know that I'm correct on my numbers. So let's clear this out. Let's try 34, 41, and 25. And I am getting 100, that's great. So I'm, I'm confident in my table. So I have completed the table, okay? All right, so let's do, before we get into um, parts B through C, B through C, B through D, let's just get some basics on how we start to handle table problems. All right, so let me give you a for example. Let's say I asked you the probability that somebody, that I spoke to a random hiker 
and that hiker was female. So I want the probability that I spoke to a female and I'm gonna use F to denote female. So if I wanna think about this, I had 100 hikers. What was the likelihood that I talked to a female? Well, how many females did I have total? 45. How many hikers did I have in my sample space? 100. So what is that probability? 0.45, okay? So there's just a basic look at a probability using a table. Um, let's try, what is the probability that I found um, somebody who liked hiking near mountain peaks? And I will use MP to talk about mountain peaks. All right, so what's the probability that I talk to somebody liking mountain peaks? Well, it looks like there are 25 folks who like or who prefer hiking near mountain peaks out of a total of 100. So that probability would be 0.25. Great. Um, let's try another one. Let's try the probability of a male, that I spoke to a male. So again, pause the tape. See if you can come up with the answer on your own and then unpause it and check. So if I wanna look at male, how many outcomes were favorable to male? 55 out of 100. We've got 0.55. Just something quick to point out, I want you to take note that these two probabilities add up to 100%, or they add up to one as a decimal. That's because these two events are complementary. We're viewing gender as just binary. You fit into a male or female category, so if you're female, great, and if you're not female, you're in the male category. That's why these two add up to 100%. Um, let's try one more. Let's try prefer lakes and streams. So what is the probability that I would encounter a hiker that prefers hiking near lakes and streams? So if I look, there are 41 out of 100. So that would be 0.41, okay? All right, so let's start to chat, chat about where the and lives. And here's what I mean. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask us, what's the probability that we had a male who preferred hiking near the coastline? And this is our first look at the and, okay? And as we go through all of these types of problems, whether it's a tree or a table or a Venn, we need to know where the and lives. So I'm gonna put that right here. So the and, all right? What you wanna do for your numerator is look for where your row and column overlap, and then your denominator will always be the sample size. So let me write this out. So this is row, and column overlap. And then sample size is on the denominator. Okay. So row and column overlap, sample size on the denominator. So let's think about how that plays out for males and coastline. So my numerator will be where the row of the males overlaps with the column of the coastline. So let's do this. I'm going to put my eraser here. Here's the row for the males. Here is the column for the coastline. Row for males, column for coastline. Where do they overlap? Right here at 16. So this will be 16 in my numerator and my total sample size was 100 or 0.16. Yeah. So as we're going through this, when you talk about the and, all right, and I keep referring to the and because it shows up all the time. If you have a table problem and you need to calculate an and, and you might need to do it for a formula one, two, four, or five, the and on a table where the row and column overlap divided by that number on the far bottom right of your table or the, your sample size, okay? All right, so before we get too much farther with that, there is something I wanna show you I wanna show you how this first probability formula is playing out. So let's, let's try this one, all right? And I, I'm gonna do it for the probability of um, males or coastline, all right? So let me show you where this is working. I, I wanna do formula one. So formula one said the probability of A or B equal the probability of A 
plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. All right, and I want to show you why that formula is true um, in a table. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do males and coastlines. So I'm going to change in a moment all of my letter A's to M's and all of my letter B's to C's just to kind of adjust it for this problem. So males and coastlines. And you can just watch this. This, this will just show you how you calculate some basic probabilities. So males and coastlines. And I want to show you why we're subtracting this, this last piece out. All right, here we go. So if I want male or a coastline, all right, we're going to do probability of male plus probability of coastline minus probability of their overlap. All right, so let's do this. I want the probability that I talked to a male. So if I, let me move my table up or my paper up so we can see the entire table and, and play this out. So here we go. If I talked to a male, are you with me if I'm talking to a male? It's all 55 of these guys, right? I want this male row. So I want the 16, 25, and 14, which we know totals out to 55, out of 100, okay? Then I want the coastline folks. So the coastline folks are all of these folks, right? There are 34 out of 100. And I want you to look, who did we count twice? We counted all the males and we counted all of the coastline folks, right? All of these three cells plus all of these two cells. What did we double count? Can you start to see that the overlap was what we counted twice? Because the 16 got counted in the male row and the coastline column. So we overrepresented this cell, right? Because we counted it twice, which is why we want to subtract it out once. We are balancing, right? So when I do this, right, I had the 55 folks here, the 16, excuse me, the 34 folks here, and I double counted those 16 folks. So I want to subtract them out once, for balance, if you go back to your calculator, right, we've got just some stuff we can enter in our calculator. 55 divided by 100 plus 34 divided by 100 minus 16 divided by 100. And I find out that's the number 0.73. Or if I wanted to write it as a fraction, it would have been 73 over 100 or 0.73. But really what I'm, I'm going for here is I want you to understand why do we subtract out that and. It's because it was counted in this row and this column, so we counted these 16 gentlemen twice. We want to subtract them out once to bring balance to our equation. Okay, with that, let's actually get to the problems that we're being asked to figure out. So if I look at the first one, it says, are the events being female and preferring the coastline independent? All right, so independent has popped up and I'm being asked, are they? So my answer is that either going to be, yes, they are independent, or I might say, no, they are not independent. I'll have to crunch some numbers and figure it out. Now, going through this, if we're talking about independent events, right? in this case, I have a table method, and I'm combining it with either equations three or four. I have the choice. I said my, my bias is I always pick four. So I'm going to do a table problem and equation four. All right, so I want you to see what that looks like right now. So is the probability of, well actually before I move that, let's try that. I want the probability of female and coastline. Is that the same as the probability of being female times the probability of preferring the coastline? So I'm gonna swap out the letters in formula four for my letters of my particular problem. So F and C, F, C. Okay, so let's see. All right, if I start to crunch some of this, let me push my table up as far as I can get to it. Okay, so female and coastline, I see the and. I'm on a table problem. So if I'm on a table problem and I wanna do an and, I wanna look for where the row and column overlap, that will be my numerator, and my sample size will be my denominator. So let's figure it out. Here's the row of females and the column of coastliners. So that row and that column overlap at 18, that will be my numerator. And I'm gonna put 
my question mark. Okay, what's the probability that I'm female? Well, let's take a look. There were 45 females out of 100 total. And I'm going to multiply that by the probability of the coastline. So there were 34 folks who like the coastline out of 100 total. Once I get those fractions in place, it's number crunching. There's no more stats. This is all calculator work. So let's see what's happening on the left and right sides of those equal signs. I know I have 18% here. That one I can calculate in my head. Is that equal to, this would be 0.45 times 0.34. So let me crunch that on my calculator and see what we're getting. So I have 0.45 times 0.34 which is 0.153. And if you wanted to leave them as fractions, you could have. You could have done 45 divided by 100 times 34 divided by 100, and you would have still gotten 0.153. I just thought crunching the decimals was less buttons to push. So as we're moving through this, is it true? Does 0.18 equal 0.153? No. So I'm going to put a slash through that equal sign, and the answer to my question is no. Right? Therefore, no, these events are not independent. No, being female, oops. And preferring the coastline. Are not independent. So here I am, right? I, I've answered the question asked of me and I've proven it with that formula. All right, so moving along from there, let's take a look at what part C is asking of us. So part C is saying, hey, can you find the probability that a person is male given that the person prefers hiking near lakes and streams? And then they give us some notation. All right, so what words tell you that this is a conditional probability? Well, we've mentioned it before, but let me highlight it. All right, so here we have the phrase given that, right? That's the big one, right? I also see a probability in there, but it's the phrase given that that is really telling me what I need to do. So fill in the blanks and calculate the probability. So let's see what we've got here. Find the probability that a person is male given that the person prefers hiking near lakes and streams. Whatever is given goes after the vertical bar. And they're saying let L represent hiking near lakes and streams. So I'm going to put the L after the vertical bar and the M right here. Okay. Once you know what order that goes in, we're going to go apply it to our formula. So now we're looking at a table problem in combination with formula 2. And we had M given L. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divorce myself from A and B and just do M given L. So this will be M and L and L here on the denominator. Right? So our particular problem is M given L. So this will be M and L over the probability of L. So let me go write that down. And we're going to see what we're working with. So I have the probability of M and L over the probability of L. And things are gonna get a little cramped, but we'll make it work. All right, here we go, the and. This numerator is a fraction, and this denominator is a fraction also, but let's figure out the and. So the and on a, tr on a table is where the column and row overlap, and then the denominator will be the sample size. So let's remember M and L, and I'm gonna scroll back down or scooch back down to my table. So let's see if we can't find this. So I'm looking at male, right, and lakes and streams. So where does the row of male intersect the column of lakes and streams or overlap? It's going to be at this 25. So let me go put that into my, my problem. So this numerator in and of itself is a fraction. So we've got 25 out of 100 here. And then the next thing I want to take a look at is what was the probability that somebody liked hiking near lakes and streams? Well, let's, let's go find out. So I'm going to scooch this back down. All right. So what were our numbers for hiking near lakes and streams? 
So it looks like 41 out of 100 folks liked hiking near lakes and streams. So let me go put that in to my work. All right, and you can see with this conditional probability, we have a fraction divided by a fraction. And we've run into this a couple of times. So I'm gonna multiply by a reciprocal. I'm gonna scoot over here just so I have some room. So we have 25 over 100. And then I'm gonna multiply that by 100 over 41. The hundreds will cancel out or divide out. That leaves me with 25 out of 41. And if I push that in as a decimal, or convert that in as a decimal, we've got 25 out of 41. And we're looking at about, what, about 61%. All right, so I've got about a 61% chance here that if I'm talking to somebody who likes or who prefers hiking near the lakes and streams, that I'm also talking to a male. All right, but let's, let's take a step back and think about this, right? So this is given that I am talking to someone who prefers to hike near a lake and stream, how many of those were males? So here's what I love about contingency tables. I, and I wrote this in the, in the very first part, right? That these tables help in determining conditional probabilities quite easily. So we were looking, and I'm just gonna remind you for the probability of M given L, that was our initial setup. So I want you to think about this. We were given, you liked hiking near lakes and streams. How many folks preferred hiking near lakes and streams? 41 of them. Of those 41, how many were male? 25. So with the tables, when you become experienced enough, it's pretty awesome that all I need to do for the tables is just kind of shrink my universe to my condition. And my condition was I'm talking to people liking their, I'm hiking, excuse me, liking or preferring to hike near lakes and streams. So I'm limiting my sample space. I'm kind of closing it off to just these 41 people. And of those 41 people, 25 for male. So I personally, I love um, conditional probabilities when we're dealing with tables because you can kind of just narrow your scope and figure out what your, um, what your denominator will be. And you don't always have to do that, right? If, if that's not something that comes naturally for you or you're not there yet, no problem. Um, you can work towards it or you can always use this formula. The thing I actually like about the formula is that this works regardless of the method. So this is advantageous, the formula, in just that it works whether you're dealing with a tree, a van, or a table. But if you get experienced enough and feel comfortable, and you know you have a conditional probability in a table, you can kind of just see the denominator and numerator in, in your table, okay? So is the sample space for this problem all 100 hikers? The answer is no, all right? We reduced our universe with that condition, and we're only looking at the 41 hikers who prefer hiking near lakes and streams. So we limited our sample down to the 41 hikers who preferred hiking near lakes and streams. All right, so let's try this. Here we go. We're looking at part D. Find the probability that a person is female or prefers hiking on mountain peaks. All right, so I see the word probability, right? All of these say the word probability, but I see the or hanging out, right? So let's, let's take a look at the or. All right, so I've got my or. I'm on a table problem. Let's see where we're, we're going. So our table, and in part B, we use formula four. In part C, we use formula two. But now in part D, we're gonna use formula one. So we're going through a bunch of these formulas under this table method. So I'm gonna swap the letters they gave me. They gave me female or prefer hiking near lakes and streams, right? So F or P. So I'm gonna have probability of F plus probability of P minus the probability of F and P, right? Probability of F, P, F, P, F, P. So let's swap out the letters in the, the formula for the letters in our particular problem, and we'll start crunching some numbers. All right, so here we go. I want the probability of female or 
prefers hiking on mountain peaks. Okay. All right, so we can do this. We have three numbers to crunch. This probability, this probability, this probability, and then we'll do those. We'll add the two, subtract the one, call it a day. All right, so here we go. I need the probability that I spoke to a female. So let me scroll up to my table again, and let's look for the probability that we were speaking with the female. So if I look at the females, there were 45 out of 100. So that's what I'm gonna put for my first probability number here. So we've got 45 out of 100. Okay, great. The next thing I need is prefer prefers mountain peaks. So let me go back to my table again. All right, prefers mountain peaks. So mountain peakers, it looks like there were 25 out of 100. Okay. So the next number I need to crunch, I need the and. And we've talked about this. Anytime you want an and and you're on a table problem, look for where your row and your column overlap, that will be your numerator. And then your overall sample size is gonna be your denominator. So we need females and mountain peaks. So I'm going back to the table. Let's see what we got here. So I need females and mountain peaks. They overlap right here at 11. So I'm gonna go 11, right? And then I'm gonna go out of 100. All right, so moving through this, We've got 11 out of 100. So what do we have here? If I go to my calculator, I am looking at 45 out of 100, 25 out of 100, minus 11 out of 100. Oops, I don't think I divided that correctly. There we go. So we're looking at 0.59. If you wanted that as a fraction, that's 59 out of 100. So let's just take a step back again and see where this formula came from. So we had all of the females, all of the folks who preferred hiking near mountain peaks minus their overlap. So why did we subtract out that overlap? Well, we talked about it before, but it, it's always worth repeating, especially with these probability questions. So we had all of the females, right? All 45 of these ladies. We had all of the mountain peakers, right? All 25 of these folks. And you can see that 11 got counted twice. It got counted in the row and in the column. So these 11 people were overrepresented in our formula, which is why when we go back down to that last part, we subtract it out once to balance it, okay? All right, now, I just wanna kind of do a quick overview of these problems on the tables. When you're talking about probabilities on table problems, your denominator is almost always this number in the bottom right-hand corner. So if you look at most of these probabilities, right? 100, 100, 100 was the denominator, 100, 100. All of the ones down in part D were also having denominators of 100, 100, 100. The only time your, your denominator will not ultimately be 100 is with the conditional probabilities. So you see here that the hundreds wound up canceling and my ultimate denominator was 41. That is the only situation in these um, probability questions where your denominator will not ultimately be 100. But on the steps getting here, both of these denominators were 100. So it's just something to note that when you're dealing with table problems, most of the time your end answer will have a denominator with whatever number is down here in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so just summarizing what we've done. In this problem, we did the table method. We looked at formula one, formula two, and formula four. Okay? All right, so I'll catch you on the next one. We're doing Venn's.